Shelley here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. So today I thought I'd come on here and share with you how I colour the mouse from Matchstick Mouse. Um, so the book I have, um, this is the only Matchstick Mouse book I have and it's Matchstick Mouse uh, floral colouring book. And I have had requests on how I colour the mouse in, in this book. And so I just thought I'd come on here and share with you guys. Um, I have actually set out the colours for Matchstick Mouse um, throughout the book. So I'm going to be using the same colours throughout this book because I thought it would be an easy pick-me-up book when I just feel like colouring something. I don't have to think about what fur colour I want to do. At least on each page, I know what the colour the mouse is going to be. And so I thought that, um, yeah, I'd keep it consistent throughout the book. I know it might be boring for some people. Some people will probably like to come up with different uh, fur on each page. But for me, I wanted this to be an easy colour, relaxing book. And so I thought that if I knew my colour of the fur, throughout the book it'll be an easy one for me to say okay yeah, I'll pick it up and color a page um, when I don't have much time or anything like that but anyways I just thought I'd share with you how I color the fur on um, Matchstick Mouse so I'll just zoom in and we'll get started so as you can see obviously I've started this page already and I am testing out and playing around with my Pablo pencils on this page so so far all I've done is the Pablo pencils but my mouse, like I said, I've set out the colours already, are going to be with my Faber-Castell Albrecht Jura pencils, um, which is what you guys are used to on the channel. Um, so yeah, I'm going to stick to them for the fur. And I haven't pulled out my little swatches, but I'll tell you the names of the pencils I'm using and the numbers. And then I'll also hopefully remember to put it in the description box below um, so that you can have a look at the the combinations I'm using. All right, so I'll just get started. Sorry if my voice changes, but I've just sat down. Um, and yeah, so I decided, first of all, I'm starting with a cold gray 230. All right, cold gray one, two, uh, number 230. And all I do is a layer, a base, um, all over my mouse where the fur is going to be. Um, and I, instead of doing circular motions, I am doing just side to side sort of motions because it's going to be fur. So it's going to be sort of, stro I'm going to be doing strokes or flicking actions. So I'm basically doing side to side um, coloring um, in the direction that the fur is going to be. So for example, here, I went that way. And then here we have the fur sort of direction set out. So I'm just going to follow the, the fur lines and sort of um, go in that direction for the fur. Yeah. All right. And I'm literally putting just a very light layer. Now we're going to put loads of layers down. So it's better to have a light hand throughout this process. All right. Um, so literally, other than the hands and the nose, I'm just putting down, and then the feet as well, I'm just putting down a layer. And it's just a very light layer, a base of my cold grey one. I decided that my mouse is going to be a grey mouse, but with tones of sort of brown in it. Um, so the illustrator has obviously gone for a brown mouse. I didn't stick to that. I just decided to go for my own thing. Um, but that's okay, you can do whatever you want to do. You want to have a pink mouse, go for that. <laughs> so mine is a grey mouse, grey, predominantly grey with little hints of brown, which I'll bring in at the end. All right, so there we go. I've put down a base. Now, in the areas that are going to be shadow areas or where I want my fur to be darker, I'm going to put in a couple more layers of a base. So no flicking, no strokes, just shading from side to side. So... The hat here, for example, is going to create a shadow on, on the mouse's fur. So I'm just going to put in another base. Maybe you can do like three bases, three layers, sorry. And I'm going to have darker fur, or that's how I've decided to do my mouse, is there's going to be darker fur closer to the nose. So I'm going to put in a couple more layers just around closer to the nose part going light. So I'm not going to go cover up all of that area with the two, three bases. I'm just going close to the nose where I want my darkness to be. And then I want this part where there's no first strokes. Um, I want that part to be 
um, the lightest part of the fur of the mouse. And that just reminds me, I forgot to base the belly. So <laughs> just putting down one layer of belly. The, the fur is going to have strokes going down. So I'm just going up and down for my shading. There we go. And then we're going to have some shadow here because of the hat. So I'm just putting in a shadow. I mean, a couple more layers to create, start creating my little shadow areas. And then around here, our fur is going to go that way. I will put in a little bit of shadowing. I'll see if I come in with my darker shades there, but I might not come in with all of my darker shades, but I'm just trying to create a little bit of a shadow in the light parts of the fur. And then also here where the nose is, because the nose will create a little bit of a shadow, just a tiny bit there around the nose, okay? Then when we go down here, we, we have shadows created by the little cute scarf there. Yeah, and here, so again, just basing still. Now this is just Amazon paper, so we have to use a very light hand. Hopefully I've not gone too hard already, but we have to use a very light hand because, um, yeah, you may not be able to layer too much because it's such thin paper. Um, so yeah, try and keep the layers light. You can always add more and more layers, but once you've pressed too hard, then it's hard to bring that back. Yeah. There's going to be a bit of a shadow here as well because of the scarf so i'm just still basing so you may not be able to see this very well on on screen because it's such a light color it's the lightest cold gray basically i'm going to put a shadow here it helps when you're layering it starts to help basically create those shadows now i'm just trying to think where i want my dark fur here i think obviously the light will hit here but i need this area to look like it's behind um, so maybe we can just have a little bit of darkness. I'll keep those little strokes of fur light, but I'm just going to put in a bit of darkness here and maybe close to this side, okay? I'll see once I come in with my darker pencils, but there we go. All right, so I've, all I've used so far was my base color, which is a cold gray one, 230. In the areas that are darker or I want to have darker shadows, I've just gone in with the base a, a couple more times, all right? Now I'm going on to my second pencil, which is cold gray two, which is 231. I will put this in the description box below. And again, I'm basing. So basing meaning I'm just shading back and forth in the, the areas that are, going to, that are going to be dark, all right? So all my shadow areas. All right. Then there's a shadow here. So literally, again, very light pressure. All of this will have a little bit of a shadow because of the straps of the bag. Yeah, I think I've decided that the shadow is going to be here on the back of the leg. I'll have to leave a thin, like a very narrow line maybe without any dark um, fur so that this leg here looks like it's sitting behind. So once we come to put in the darker shades, it'll be more obvious what I'm trying to say. Um, I put the shadows there already, haven't I? All right, I think that's fine. And then I'm going to um, put in first strokes. So in the dark areas. So now I'm literally doing flicks. All right, make sure Again, you're still light-handed. You're going to come in with darker colors, so that will emphasize the first strokes, okay? But I'm doing flicks in the dark areas first. I don't know the theory behind this. I'm just doing what, what looks okay to me. And then a very few in the light areas as well, because we need to have that effect of fur, not just leave it with the base. So I'm putting first strokes in the dark areas or the areas that will be in a shadow and then on the lighter areas. 
So over here, we're going to be in the shadow, definitely. And then all over. So we're going to put a few strokes there because of the shadow. And the stroke should be in the direction of the fur. Now, my fur is not super realistic. I don't think this, for this particular illustration anyways, um, it needs to be super realistic. So I'm not doing a tutorial on how you do fur perfectly. I'm doing it on matchstick mouse. So if it doesn't look realistic, that's okay. He's a mouse that wears clothes and has a mouse as a friend. So it doesn't have to be realistic, right? Did I say a mouse as a friend or did I say a worm? Worm as a friend. Okay, so I'm just carrying on with my strokes. I'm going to try and first do it in the dark areas. They'll be more obvious once I come in with my darker shades, especially the next one. I think the one I start with next will definitely show you the darker shades. So in the dark areas first and then a few light strokes a few strokes basically just keeping it light in the light areas because we don't want that to become too dark we still want to leave that light all right I think that's it that's fine and then i'm going to go in with my silver um 251 i like using silver for this fur and i'm only doing first strokes so the flicks the strokes in the darkest areas So the shadow areas or the areas of the fur, even if it's not in shadow, but the areas of the fur that you want to have a bit more of a darkness. Yeah. Putting a little bit very lightly in this area. I might not use all my dark shades, but I want to make that light part of our fur look like it's in shadow as well because of the hat. A little bit of darkness here. Oops. So I do find the silver is actually quite soft. I, I do tend to break it quite often, but I only really use it when I'm use, doing fur. And obviously I, I'm a bit heavy handed. <laughs> but there we go. So just my dark areas. And yeah, it does help to, to, to get the fur strokes, the flicks. It's good to have sharp um, pencils. So you get clean strokes. All right, I'm going to leave that area a little bit light for now, especially. And here, I just want to put a bit of a shadow again. So just a bit of a line. I don't want to bring this dark fur in, I don't think, completely. Just to create the three, to help create the shadow so that you get a 3D effect of the scarf, you know, popping out rather than being part of the mouse. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, did I put my first strokes here? All right. Then my next one is not very sharp. I'm just going to try and sharpen this a tiny bit more. Is actually going to be a warm gray three, um, which is 272. And for this one, I'm going to start again in the dark areas. And um, but I'm also going to do a few strokes in the lighter areas. Maybe not on the face here, which I want it to be very light. The belly, I want it to be very light. I'll see once I start putting it the rest of the fur. Where the, fur, where the artist has put the first strokes is where I'm going to go over. Okay, so first in my dark areas. 
because I definitely want it in the darker areas and then very few just to help with giving the fur effect in the light areas as well all right so definitely in the shadow areas and then a few in the areas that are going to have the lighter fur, colored fur I'm trying to not take too long because obviously this is clearly a book that should not take too much time and I know for many people it doesn't but for me it's still <laughs> it's still a project for me which is quite funny I know but so a few in the areas that I had left light okay and this hand here there we go um i think on the belly i'm going to add a little bit so i'm just going to add a little bit of shading there and a few strokes here and there very light again just to give the effect that that is fur yeah so not too many because i want it to be a lot lighter than the surrounding fur okay so maybe i'll do the same here just a few here and there just to sort of make it look like fur i'm just going to check can you guys see this well hopefully i do struggle with fur fur is a challenge for me to be honest um and if it is for you just take your time just try and see how you want to your first strokes to go which direction you want them to go in um yeah all right so that was the warm gray three two that was 272 now i'm going in with a dark cold gray which is a cold gray six 235 now this is going to be just in the dark areas i'm still adding more layers okay well i'll have one more shadow pencil And this is where I think it's even more important to make sure your pencil is um, sharp because obviously the dark colors are now going to show even more. So you want it to look like good strokes, good flicks, you know, rather than blunt hairs. Yeah. You can always, if you find that the light areas are too light, you can go in with your previous pencils that you've used, so, sort of like the mid-tone, so like the warm grey three that we used, um, and just add a few more strokes in the light area. But maybe it's worth doing your dark areas first, just so you can see that you're happy um, with. You don't end up becoming too light, too dark in the light areas, basically. I would definitely not use this shade in the light areas at all because that will definitely change the look of the fur in that area. It'll just bring in all the dark tones, which but then you won't have a, you know, a varying um, fur. Fur is not the same color all over. I know we're not doing a realistic fur, but even then, it just gives a bit of interest to your, to your mouse. If you give him a bit of varying fur, right? So I'm trying to create the shadow area from the bag strap here. Trying to make, trying not to make it too dark in, on this part of the leg, but I want to create some darkness to the fur. So I am bringing it down the leg. But like I said, I was going to leave that little thin area of lightness. So I'm not going right up to the line art, so the black line that the artist has drawn. I want to leave that area a little bit. And I've just flicked a few of those here, again, just to help with you know the fur effect um around the belly area because you can see it nicely 
I'm going to be going over with paint pen as well, okay, at the end, just to help with the fur again. So creating my shadow. Now here it's a small leg. We don't want to bring this color too far down. There we go. Same here, just a small bit of arm. Now I realize, I've just realized that this um, particular illustration I've chosen, the eyes are closed, so I won't be able to show you the eyes, but that's okay. I wanted to show you the fur. Now if I ever do a color along or something on um, Matchstick Mouse, I'll try and make sure I find one with open eyes. All right, now I'm going in with yet another dark um, pencil, a dark gray, which is warm gray six, which is 275. Now I've used combinations of cold grays, warm grays, Again, just to give a bit of interest to the fur. So it's not, it doesn't look all flat, like a flat color. It just helps with the whole layering and depth of color that you get. Hopefully, there's not much I can say other than do first strokes and put the dark shadows in the dark areas that you want and things like that. Um, so hopefully just watching where I'm putting the first strokes, like where I'm putting my dark first strokes um, and my keeping the areas light sort of helps, um, helps give you an idea of how I do my mouse. A little bit over here again, just to create a shadow 3D effect. So with fur, what I find is, yes, I'm, I'm trying to put dark areas in shadow, like dark colors in shadow areas to create the 3D effect. But then sometimes you're also like here, there's no shadow cast. So you're also thinking of putting dark um, pencils, dark colors in other parts of the fur just to give that fur interest, you know, a specific pattern of fur. For example, if you wanted to do spotted fur, not necessarily on the mouse, but on a different um, animal like a giraffe, for example, and you want to do those dark, dark spots and things like that. Um, or even a dog which has patches on it or a cat that has patches on it, you know, um, things like that. Like you want to vary the areas that have dark areas and uh, dark fur in the areas that have light to give a specific pattern. So two things we're looking at is where shadows are and where you want to, if you want to, do patterns. Um, so yeah, hopefully this makes sense. Okay, that's how I do my fur with the greys. Now, I think I want a little bit of more color on the main, not on the belly and the face. I could a little bit, but I think on this area here, I find it too light. The transition is too abrupt, basically. I want to smoothen out that transition, make it look a little bit, um, not natural, but you know, a, a smoother transition, basically. So I'm adding a little bit of my cold, warm gray, three, which is 272, sort of like a mid-tone gray, yeah? I'm just sort of helping with that transition. It's too abrupt. That just helped it sort of... Um, give a better transition, not such an obvious one, a more natural or a smooth flowing transition. My words are struggling, but there we go. So I'm adding a little bit more here as well. So the contrast, yeah, the contrast is there, but you're just sort of helping the transition. Okay, I think I'm just going to use a little bit of my silver, which is 251 here, because I feel still, despite adding the warm gray three, I need a little bit more. So I'm just adding a few strokes, um, randomly, very few strokes in that area, just to help with that, yeah? Going back with my warm gray three to help here, the transition, and a bit here. All right, do I wanna add any more in my light areas I think I'm okay for now now I'm going to go in with my brown so I've got nougat 178 so it's sort of like a mid-tone brown but it's not very yellowy it's quite a neutral sort of I don't know if that that's the right way to say it but I'm putting it in the dark areas it's not very ready brown and it's not like a yellowish brown like the brown uh, ochre or the rowamba um, 
so it's sort of like an in-between I didn't want to change the color too much I just wanted to help give a bit of an interest so I'm doing it mainly in the dark areas but I'm also bringing it into the light light areas of fur so dark areas for sure you can be more dense so obviously when you want to do dark areas not only do you use the dark pencils but you also do more strokes in those areas so it's more dense in those areas to help with the dark effect and then in the light areas you have fewer strokes of especially the darker pencils yeah it's pretty simple actually my my way of coloring guys and now i think i am going to add a little bit of the nougat very sparsely on the tummy the belly just to give it a bit more interest but i don't want to darken it up too much and also on the face where we've kept it predominantly a very light gray i just want to add a little bit of the nougat again it helps with the first stroke like just make it look like fur and um a bit more interest to the color and i think is that all i want to do i think that looks nice what do you guys think hopefully you guys like what you see yeah i think i'm happy with that now what i would do next is color oh i forgot his little ear here <laughs> okay um so i'm just going to quickly do the ears so going in with my base color first which is gold gray one which is 230 so a base a couple more layers of base in the area that's going to be darker then with my second color which is cold gray 2 231 so this is a nice recap for you guys <laughs> yeah so that was my second color in the dark areas only as a base and then first strokes all over but very lightly in the light areas then i'm going in with my silver 251 which uh, broke so it's a little bit blunt but that's okay first strokes in the dark areas only so the areas that you want the fur to be darker or the shadow areas then i'm going in with my warm gray 3 272 in the dark areas first strokes in the dark areas and then into the light areas this is a good summary isn't it then i'm going in with my cold gray 6 235 first strokes only in the dark areas yeah and then warm gray 6 275 only in the dark areas first strokes then i'm going in with my warm gray 3 272 just to help with the transition there we go and then nougat which is 178 in the dark areas mainly and then sparsely in the light areas and there we go all right so that's the summary of what colors i use for the fur and how I do it okay now I would color um, the ear the in, inner part of the ear the nose the feet and the little hands and then we will go ahead and um, do the paint pen work so I have cinnamon 189 and this I just blend as normal all right so light layers again I don't want it to be too dark I'm putting it the cinnamon in the shadow areas i'm going to use these creases to create i mean th these lines to create little creases in the ear and there and there okay and then for the feet as well i'm going to use cinnamon in the darker areas so the bottom going lighter up obviously the areas that will be the lightest will be the ones which are closest to the light source which in this case obviously the sky is above so the light source would be hitting from the top i'm not creating much of a light source i'm not playing with the light source but i am using it to help me decide where on an element on the page that my um, highlights are going to be and where the shadows are going to be yeah and then even the nose so the top part will be in um highlight so i'm just going to go for dark from the bottom up and in the mouth i'm just going to add a little bit of cinnamon there all right and then i go in with my new gargan 178 and this is just in the shadow areas over 
the cinnamon very lightly just to take away a little bit of that pinkness of the cinnamon um, a little bit don't want to make them look too brown the feet and hands and all all right and then I use, um, what do I use next? I use my um, beige red or um, light flesh. So I don't know if you would have an old set or a new set of the pencils, but beige red is the same as light flesh, which is 132. And I'm going to go over everything I've applied and blend out just to help with the blending as well. Yeah. I forgot to say that I was going to use my pencils dry for the entire mouse, but um, I guess you've probably realized that by now. When I'm doing fur, I don't tend to use um, my pencils activated with water because of the fur stroke. So I don't know how to do f give the effect of fur um, by using water yet. So that's something hopefully one day I would learn. But So I'm basically blending out the cinnamon, the nougat, and going up into my highlight areas, but not fully. I want to leave some highlight. Okay. And then I use my ivory, which is 103, 103. And I just give hints of the ivory from the highlight area and blend it inwards. Not all the way into the dark area, but just blend out parts of my light flesh or beige red that I just applied. Yeah, so this is ivory 103. Sorry, I'm doing this a little bit fast. Trying to not take too long. And I, once again, I forgot, but anyways, I'll first do this. Um, I'm gonna put hints of the salmon, which is 130. The thing I forgot is the tail, but I do this. I use these same colors for the tail, so I guess I'll give you a summary again. <laughs> a little bit of pinkness there, brighter pinkness basically, just very lightly, sort of glazing over. All right. Okay, then so just to summarize, <laughs> and I'll do it on the on the tail. Um, so I go in with my cinnamon in my shadow area. So this area here will be in shadow because of the mouse's bum. And then the top of the tail will be um, hit with light. So I'm just going to do my shadow as the bottom of the tail going up towards the highlight. Yeah. So cinnamon going from the bottom of the tail up towards the highlight. Just keeping it simple really. This, this book for me is relaxed colouring book, not too much thinking, and so I'm not making it too complicated for myself. <laughs> and then we go in with our nougat, and I want the tail to look a little bit pinker, so I'm not going to use the nougat all the way. I'm just going to do it in the shadow area there, and a little bit there, and that's it. And then I'm going to go in with my cinnamon, and blend it all out into the highlight area, but leaving... A bit of the whites of the paper so not all the way into my highlight and then with with my light flesh I am using a bit more pressure because I'm trying to blend it out and obviously this is Amazon paper it is hard to blend and get rid of all the tooth of the paper without using other mediums so I do press a little bit more there then I use my ivory which is 103 and there we go and then a little bit of my salmon, 130, to give a bit of a pinkness. So just sort of glazing over, just not in the highlight area, sort of over the 132, so the light flesh or the beige red. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully that looks nice for you guys. Okay, then that's it. Um, so what I do next, and hopefully I'm, I don't mess up too much, but I take my Thule paint pens, okay? I use Thule art paint pens. I've got a grey one, um, which is 
both are from the earth set um a lot of people have the earth set and probably some of the, uh, maybe some people have the pastel set so earth set i have th number 32 and number 11. so the 32 is like a gray it's a bit darker than the gray i would want to use however i don't have the gray set so i make do it's not a big deal um <clears throat> so i'm just shaking it up and what i do with this paint pen and hopefully it works on camera is in some highlight areas i i want to cover up the black lines just so um it, it helps with the highlight so and some of these black lines are quite thick so i don't want like i didn't want the black line there where we've got our highlight yeah or where we've got our light fur and then even here i just sort of cover up um that area all right so and then here i the fur is in highlight on the ear so i'm going to cover up that black line and a little bit of that one okay uh, i don't always know whether this looks good because the the gray i have is not great but i sometimes cover up these um black uh, black lines there as well so you guys can tell me what you think about that whether that's worth doing and then here definitely i don't want those black lines where we have our so i'm literally just doing strokes and you can add more strokes than what the illustrator has put down so that you can make it look like fur yeah and then here as well that we kept the fur light there so i'm going to just go over those black lines not very neatly i'm just basically doing strokes to help again with the fur effect but at the same time cover up some of the black lines see i covered it up there because i wanted that leg to look dark so we'd kept that little area which did not have any dark fur on it i don't think i need the areas that have dark fur so i'm not covering up those black lines completely and the way the artist has drawn it with strokes it sort of gives the effect of fur so you don't need to emphasize it anymore all right so that's what i do with my gray i just in the highlight areas cover up the black lines then i go over my fur now and i add little fur strokes all right i do go over the black lines that are already there and then add a few of my own it just helps with first of all getting rid of those black lines but it helps with giving more of a fluffy look to the mouse i feel and if you feel that in the dark areas when you put the Tulia paint pen, it has become too light. You can go over with your darker pencils to just um, darken up those light strokes that you've just put in. But I don't mind them. I think it just helps with the fluff, <laughs> making him look fluffy and cuddly. All right. So that's basically what I do with my Tulia paint pens, Tulia paint pens. Yeah. So I add in and try and cover up some of those black lines, add in some strokes, and that hopefully looks a bit more fluffy. And that's also because my fur, when I use pencils, are is quite perfect in that all the strokes are in the same line. So this sort of helps um, with giving the fluffy effect. All right. Then I go in with my um, earth, to, earth pen number 11. And we're almost done this is the last thing all right and for this i use it to help me cover up the black lines around the areas where we've done the okay you guys need to wait for the paint pen to dry before you put your hands on it like i just did but um helps cover up the black lines where um you don't want them that's what i basically use it for and again helps with the um highlights highlight areas Okay. Sorry guys, I am trying to speed up because I do have a phone meeting in about 10 minutes. So I don't want to take too long now as well, but I'm, I'm almost done. There we go, steady hand. And I'm going to just where the highlight areas and those I'm just going to cover up those black lines again to help with the highlight, make it pop a bit. 
So this area is in highlight. Yeah. And for this, I don't want the black lines. I want, I want it to look, so I'm going to actually cover up even the lines that are in shadow because I don't want them to look black. There we go. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? My hands are not very steady. There we go. Have I missed anything, guys? Maybe here I can put the pink one. There we go. I like that. All right. So that is how I do Matchstick Mouse. That's my version of Matchstick Mouse, and I really like it. I like the greys. I like the little hints of brown. I know it's hard to see on a um, on the camera, but hopefully it was clear enough. Um, and yeah, he looks cute, doesn't he? Um, so yeah, you guys can let me know. Hopefully, it's been helpful. Um, especially for those of you who requested um, me to show how I color my mouse in Matchstick Mouse. This is how I do it. And it's so simple and it's so fun and it's so quick. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. All right. So I'll see you guys next time. And um, hopefully I'll be back with another video, which might be a little bit longer. All right. Take care. Thank you for watching. And I'll be back with you guys soon. Bye bye.